All right, so how do you measure how much precipitation is felt? Because, you know, you hear, oh, it's going to be two inches over here, four inches over here, half an inch over here, or over, uh, when I lived in Colorado, it was like, oh, we're having three feet of snow, right? Now, how did they measure that? And this is the standard way of doing it. It's called a standard rain gauge. And it basically looks like a bucket, right? A scientific high-tech bucket, right? And what it is, it's got an outer bucket and an inner cylinder. Now, this inner cylinder collects the water. So what happens is up here, the rain falls in the hole, and it's got a funnel that directs it into this inner cylinder. This cylinder um, has basically a ruler on it, but we can't say something that simple in science, so we say it's a graduated cylinder. It's got your ruler on it. That's all it means. Graduated cylinder, it's got your ruler on it. And so you can see and the rain falls in and then you can say, okay, it went up to here. It's 30 centimeters. Okay. That's, that's how it works. Now it can measure up to the smallest part is 0 0.025 centimeters. So that's point zero sorry that's point two five millimeters it's really 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 small and sometimes you can see that there's water in there but you can't actually tell how much it is because it's less than the point two five millimeters so you call that trace like you i know there's water in here but i can't measure it because it's too small so it's trace so you have a trace amount of water that fell now there's other ways you can do it uh, tipping bucket, that's this guy over here, and weighting gauge down here. So tipping bucket, it, again, you have the funnel, collects the water, but what happens inside is you have this little thing that goes back and forth, kind of flips up and then flips down and flips up and flips down. And so you can see the water's going into this bucket. This bucket's going to get too heavy and go, bloop, and then this bucket's going to come up and get filled. And when that one gets filled, it's going to get too heavy and go, bloop, and it pours out. Now... The amount of times that it flips back and forth is what we measure, and so we know how much rain there is. Now, waiting gauge. <laughs> you can't see inside this one, but basically there's a cylinder on top of a spring. And the cylinder collects, and as it collects, it fills and it gets heavier, and the spring moves up and down, and that gets transmitted to a pen, kind of like a, like a lie detector thing where it, the amount of weight in that cylinder is pushing it down, controlling the spring, controlling the pen, and so that's how we find out how much is in a weighting gauge. Now, how do you measure snow? Now, thankfully, here in Florida, we don't really care. <laughs> um, but it's really funny when they're measuring snow in Colorado. Uh, because it's... Let's just go. Scientists can't just tell you there's a simple method. So they say they have to use a calibrated stick to measure how far the snow has raised on the ground. And so, <laughs> calibrated stick. It's called a roller. Okay. So basically they let out all the snowfall and then they go outside and they stick a roller in the snow and go, okay, it's this much snow. And it's kind of funny because when you... <laughs> When you actually experience a lot of snow, really, like if you're in the Colorado area and there's a snowfall, it's really nice. It's a really nice place to experience snow. Snow falls and the next day it's gone. It's amazing. If you're going to experience a snowfall, go to Colorado. Or the Swiss Alps. You know, one of the two. But if you're there, and so I used to, I used to get a kick out of it because the newscasters and the meteorologists would... Okay, well, it snowed. Let's go see how much snow it was, right? And they'd be standing next to a picnic table that just got snowed on. And the snow would be piled up, I don't know, let's say, eight inches, right? It would, I mean, it looks like a good, good set of snow. And they go out and there's their ruler. All right, it looks like it snowed this much. You're like, really? I could have did that in my backyard. Yes, you can. So... People started to realize that, oh, it really is that simple. So we're like, okay, we're going to start doing water equivalence method. Which, if you ask me, is dumb. 
because I used to live in Colorado. What do people do in Colorado? Ski, right? That's what it's known for. I never skied in Colorado, just for the record. But that's what most people do. They ski, and when you ski, you want to know how much snow there is. So you stick a ruler in it and say that's how much snow it is. Right? And Because that's what you're going to be standing on when you ski, or in my case, that's what I'm going to be falling in when I ski. But no, 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 we're like, okay, that's too simple. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a chunk of snow and we're going to melt it and then we're going to pour it into a gauge, a standard rain gauge, and we're going to measure it as rain. Well, to me, this is stupid because what happens when water freezes? It expands. So by melting it, you're actually shrinking the amount. So if I want to go skiing, I don't want your water equivalent shrunk version. I want to stick a stick of ruler in it and tell me how much snow I'm going to fall into, please. Now, there are other ways that we're more sophisticated with this, right? Weather radar. We've all heard weather radar. We've all seen weather radar. This is what you see on the news. I mean, if you have a weather app, and you see the radar and all the, you can see the big story coming for us, ah, right? And so what this is, this is radio waves that get shot out from the Doppler system, and it echoes back to us. Bigger the echo, more rain. Okay? Now, if it's a small droplet, right, you know those cloud droplets, it'll just go right through them. You gotta be reflected off of the bigger droplets, like actual raindrops, so that the echoes are sent back to us. All right, so let's see if this is gonna work. Here's a link. It will show us weather radar. Oh, what is this? <laughs> so of course there is no uh, radar going on right now. Okay, let's see if maybe we can find some here. What's this? Let's see this one. Okay, so Florida didn't work, so we're going to try all of America. So you can see, there really is nothing over us, um, but um, I lived here, so nothing about wow, that strange. Uh, anyway, you can see there's a big band of something right here, there's a band over here, there's a band over here, something's happening over here, some band over here, I believe this used to be um, Nana. Uh, Hurricane Nana. Pretty interesting. Alright, so yes, that's radar, and that is another tool that we use to me measure precipitation.